Hi guys, how are you doing? Hope you're doing well. Welcome back to my channel. Let me get a bit more situated, but welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video, which is going to be a little bit of a different one, but kind of on a theme of, well, it's on the theme of shops and retail and stuff like that, which is what this channel is all about, as well as I have done videos in the past about like histories of, the rise and falls of, kind of thing like that. And this video is more about retail news because this is something that sparked my interest and I wanted to have a discussion about it. But first off, if you're new, hi, welcome. My name is Matt. Welcome to my channel. Please take a moment to subscribe. If you do like, normally we do like come shop with me's hauls, too good to go bags occasionally, grocery hauls, all that kind of jam on this channel. But we also occasionally splatter in some of these kind of videos where it's more about retail history maybe, so or like the rise and fall of a retailer, all that kind of stuff. And that is what interests me and might interest you. So do take a moment to subscribe. It's free. There's no cost for you to do so. Just click that button down there and ring my bell to be notified of when I upload. But as I said, today's video is going to be more about retail news because I, I don't subscribe, but I read Retail Gazette on a daily basis um, because they release news all the time. Um, it's an online website, it's free, you don't have to subscribe or anything. I find that's a really good resource because there's places like the Retail Week, I think it's called, and like Drapers, where you have to subscribe to pay. And there used to be one called My Retail Something, which doesn't exist anymore, but I find the Retail Gazette and I think the Fashion Industry, which is also free, are really good um, sources of information. I'll link those down below as well as the article that I'm going to talk to you about today because my source for this is the Retail Gazette. Um, they're really good resources if you're interested in retail news, stuff like that. I'm also, it's quite sad, um, I really do like looking on um, forums and things in terms of um, Skyscraper City Forum. I, I really like, and I have been to Birmingham a handful of times and Manchester like once, but I really do like looking at the um, forums on there to have a look at the retail news because they have really good retail news ones as well as I'm fairly close to Milton Keynes like that's my biggest town I would say near me with a really good retail focus and they have one on there um on they have like a skyscraper city dedicated to the retail in Milton Keynes as well so I do like to keep up to date with that as well as I like to look at planning applications and things like that from um where I live and other places as well because I just like doing that just to see get in the know and also really good like sources of like local news websites and stuff like that however today's video is about reserved and UK expansion now if you don't know what reserved is reserved I would say is Poland's because it's a Polish company answer to Zara it's like a fast fashion retailer that originated in Poland basically that is where they're from I think they're from Gdansk um, that's where like their headquarters is. Um, but I find it's kind of like in terms of like black and white logo, all that kind of thing. And in terms of price point, might be a bit more accessible than Zara because Zara's creeping up. It's more like H and M price point kind of thing. But in terms of like style and stuff, reserved, I would consider like Poland's answer to a Zara or something like that. And Poland have Poland. Reserved have one store in the UK currently, which has been there quite some time. When I used to work in London, which is over five years ago, it was there. So it's been there that time, because um, I've been at my current job five years. But yeah, it's been there for that length of time, um, and they have not expanded anywhere else in the UK. When they originally opened that store, I remember with fanfare, well not great fanfare, but it was opened, and they said this was like the start of expansion within the United Kingdom. And if you don't know, the reserve store on, Re not Regent Street, on Oxford Street, sorry, is in the old BHS store. It doesn't take over the whole of the old BHS store. It takes over part of it. I know there's like a food market. So it takes the ground floor, basically, um, from what I remember of the old BHS store. Um, and there's also a Crazy Goths upstairs in some part of the old VHS store and I also think a food market kind of thing also upstairs I believe I have not visited either of those but do let me know down below but um yeah so they've had that store a while it's quite a big store um and it has a decent size men's section I've done come shop with me is two or three maybe on that store and I will leave clips of that would we'll be overlaying 
this um, video. So it is a store that I go in, the price points are good and reasonable in most cases. Um, yeah, and I, I haven't bought anything in there. I think my sister has bought stuff in there previously because she used to live in London um, and that store was easily accessible to her, maybe on her way home from work or something. But yeah, in terms of that price point and that kind of level of clothes, Zara H&M-esque kind of thing. But I was reading on the Retail Gazette that they gear up to open new London stores as part of their European expansion. So I will leave the article for this below. Um, it is my source for this information. And it says by reserved is going to open by the end of the year, several new stores across London. Um, and they'll be opening stores in Westfield, Stratford and also Brent Cross. Brent Cross is fairly interesting because that is a quite, it's like the original out of town shopping centre. I remember doing at, U not uni, I think it was even like A-level GCSE or A-level GC A-level GCSE, GCSE Geography and A-level Geography. Um, either one of those kind of looked at the out-of-town shopping movement, obviously started in America, first like major out-of-town shopping centre mall, if you will, was Brent Cross. Um, so it is like, one was that the 70s or something that opened? So that is quite an older, smaller one if you look in terms of like Blue Water, Lakeside, the two Westfields in London, it is a smaller place. So it's interesting that they would open there. But yeah, so it, se it says it's going up to open several new stores in London and a further 400 across the U U not UK, Europe by the end of 2023. So that is quite a big expansion. And this shows that brick and mortar stores is like still at the forefront of things. And we've seen like Amazon say that they're committed to that as well in recent days. Um, and it says, so it does say Cadence headquarters, um, men's and children, it says men's and children's, but they also do women's wear. Um, they operate over 1700 stores across 20 countries at the moment. And it said that it'd be open Westfield, Stratford and Brent Cross stores this year, which um, takes its total in the UK up to three. But it also says it's also in talks um, in other cities across the UK, including Manchester, Liverpool, Leeds and Newcastle. Um, and it says they want to fill the gap. Um, so it said they've experienced a lot from the Oxford Street store and they believe they can fill the gap in the market right now, especially while many other companies are closing their stores and they hope to fill that top shop shaped hole on the high street, which I found very interesting. Um, and if you've not watched that top shop documentary, that is really interesting. Was that on the BBC? I can't remember what that's on, but that was a really interesting side. So I do recommend you take a look at that. But yeah, very interesting opening brick and mortar stores that shows that the pe there's still commitment to that. And we see that in like Amazon as well. Let me know your thoughts on all of this down below. But yeah, I found that really interesting. And I was, I think the last few times I've done a come shop with me there, I was like, they could open more stores in the UK and it would be interesting to see if they do take that route. Does the Oxford Street store perform well? That would be really interesting because I don't know. Let me know down below. Are you familiar with Reserved? One because I don't think it's a very recognisable brand in the UK at all, really, unless you're in London, you've been to the one in London, or you're just interested in retail like that, or maybe you visited Poland or you're from Poland or something like that, you probably are familiar with it, or other European countries, because they are, I know they're in other European continental countries as well. So it'd be really interesting to know its brand recognition in the UK. Maybe that is what they're going to build up. As I said, they want to um, fill that top shop shaped Whole. Um, I wouldn't really class it as a top shop because top shop used to be, if you watch the documentary on it, was like innovative. If I can even say that word, it's been a long day, guys. That work. Um, you know, it was at the forefront of fashion, and then it kind of fell back a bit, which was kind of the downfall of top shop in a way, in a way, in a way, as well as other factors. If you watch that documentary, you'll know. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. They want to follow in that footsteps. I know, um, the Brent Cross Top Shop store, which lay dormant, um has been recently tempor temporarily um, operating by uh, several charities as a charity department store, which opened a few weeks ago, which is a really good idea. Lots of charities coming together to fill a space, sharing that rent. You know, I think there was like 10 or something charities sharing that big space, which is really interesting. And I find I, that is probably, that might be, I don't, this is my alleged view, all this is opinions of me, um, from me. Um, that is where Reserved might go. I'm guessing in the Brent Cross one. I'm not sure about um, Westfield. Did When the Sting was in Westfield, did that ever get um, 
was that vacant for that long? Did that get filled? Because I know the sting was on Piccadilly, you know, where Tower Records was back in the day. Um, and there's never really been a permanent um, store there. So it'd be interesting. The sting was a, like quite an odd retailer. Um, they only had those two stores in the UK. It's from the Netherlands, I think. And it's like a multi-brand retailer, but not really as well. I think it, it's on the same lines as like Urban Outfitters. However, didn't have like the brands that Urban Outfitters did. Did They had brands. I don't know whether they were like own label or stuff like that. But the brands were like unrecognisable to a UK customer, in my opinion. But yeah, anyway, that today's was really about reserved. And I'm really interested to, um, I'm really interested in this time kind of topic so if you like this kind of video let me know down below um i'd love to know your thoughts on any of this do you think reserved is going to be successful in the uk um if they are going into more expansion because in my opinion brand recognition is quite a high factor you need to have as a store um as well as affordability they have the affordability aspect in terms of the price point and the styling is in terms of like zara h&m so it's all on that lines um but they don't have the brand recognition or the zara or h&m does in the uk um and it's also about location and rent and stuff like that i'm really interested in all your opinions on this and also anything else in terms of retail and stuff i know like i'm really interested in any new launches of stores and things so if you like this kind of video then i might be able to do it more frequently i know sephora is opening an actual store i know we've launched online um it was kind of a takeover of what went film unique wasn't it um however sephora is opening a uk store again i have to remind people again they were in the uk quite a few at the beginning of like the millennium um because i remember a store in uxbridge i remember seeing it i did not know what sephora was at the time but i just remember the black and white and that has been confirmed again with like bath and body works if you've seen my video of going to the blue water store for bath and body works Bath and Body Works used to be in the UK. I think people are forgetting this fact um, because I have seen pictures of it in Blue Water originally. But yeah, um, so Sephora is opening a store in Westfield, London in the spring, which I'm really tempted to go and have a look at because I have been in one Sephora in Lyon, I think, but never in like the American Sephora or anything like that. So yeah, retail is something that really fascinates me and I'd love you to join me on this journey if you like this type of content and I can do some more of it. Um, but I would really recommend you go have a look at the Retail Gazette book market if you really like that kind of stuff. They have stories every day and they really do get the um the good retail news on there. But yes, other than that, thank you so much for watching. If you're not already, please take a moment to subscribe, follow my Instagrams, which are always linked down below, and I shall see you in the next one. Bye.